Hey you guys, today we're going to be talking about ratios, all right? So we're going to be working in this yellow booklet. A lot of you already have it. If you don't have it, please print it out. It's dated a little bit different. It's from the 20, or I think from the 12th until the 26th or 29th, I forgot. I think the 26th. So uh, we're going to be working in that booklet as our practice, or as our, excuse me, as our notes. So make sure that you have that in front of you. Um, this is what it looks like. We've already uh, put it inside of our INA. So first thing we're doing is this. A ratio is a multiplicative comparison. Multiplicative comparison of two or more quantities. So up here, if you look up here in this little box, we have a bracelet that has three star-shaped beads for every one heart-shaped bead. So we're comparing hearts and stars. Now we're gonna get used to every time you see those words or a word, you need to put those numbers. So for example, I see right here where it says the ratio of hearts, how many are there? One, and two stars, how many stars? There are three. That's a ratio. And that's actually what we're going to put in this line right now, saying the ratio of hearts, hearts is one, to stars, stars are three, okay? That's a ratio. Like I said, this is the first time you've ever learned this, so please don't freak out. I want you to just pay attention. I promise you it's going to make sense. Now, there's three ways to write it. We wrote it in words, which is one to three. Then there's a colon, one to three. And then you can write it in the form of a fraction, which you already know would be one to three or one third. Remember, you can pause the video if I'm going too fast, but I'm gonna move quickly so you can, if you need to rewatch it, you can. Some people move faster than others. Now, let's go ahead and look at the bottom. Now, like I just said, anytime we see those words, I want you to write the number. You're gonna get used to doing this. So it says each quantity can be described as a factor of the other quantity. Remember, factors which are multiplying by. So it says the number of stars, three, is blank the number of hearts, one. Now after you've written it, I actually want you to write the fraction at the end. So the fraction would be three over one, which is really just three. So now you're gonna put this in words. Remember, factor, it would be three times. And now if you actually read it, it makes sense. The number of stars is three times the number of hearts. That is correct. Now let's do the second one. The number of hearts, one, is blank the number of stars, three. And create your fraction, one third. And that's actually what you're gonna write. The number of hearts is one third the number of stars. Okay. Now we're gonna be working on our second page inside of our booklet. The second page in our booklet. We're gonna be working with part to part. That's one way that we can do uh, ratios. Part to part, we just did it. Where we're comparing the hearts to the stars. So let's write the ratio all three ways. Stars, stars is three and hearts is one. So let's write all three ways. Remember, the first way is with words, three, two, one. Second way is with the colon, three, colon, one. Third way is a fraction, three over one. Now, if you wanna try number two and pause the video, that'd be a great idea. All right, so write the ratio of hearts, hearts is one, to stars, three. Let's write it all three ways. One to three, one colon three, and one third. Now this is where everything ties together. We're gonna to be writing the ratios as equivalent ratios or equivalent fractions, which we're gonna compare the hearts to the stars. So watch this, one heart to three stars. Give me an equivalent fraction. If you skip count, that works. One, two, and in the bottom, three to six. All right, and then you can do three ninths or 12. Now you're probably going, oh, I know this, Miss Meyer. If I were to have connected all this, you just made an EFT. 
That's exactly right. But we're going to be challenging you so that you can see how it, you can skip count without having to do it over and over and over again. We can just jump from one place to another. Watch this. I'm going to give you a little preview. I shouldn't, but I'm going to do it. How do you go from one to four times four? Well, whatever you do on the top, you do on the bottom. What is three times four? Bam. So that's a quick preview. That's called a proportion. All right. Well, let's move on. Let's move on. So now we're going to do another way that we can compare ratios. We did part to part where we were comparing stars and hearts. The second way is part to whole. I'm sorry, part to whole or part to total. So watch this, what number five says. Write the ratio of parts, one, to the total number of beads. How many total beads were there? Four. So now let's write it in all three ways. One to four, one colon four, and one fourth. If you want to try five and six and pause the video, I think that's a great idea. Write the ratio of stars to the total. Three to four, three colon four, and three fourth. And for number six, it says write ratios equivalent to the ratio of stars to the total number of beads. So we're starting with three fourths. Let's keep going. <coughs> Excuse me. Six eighths, nine twelfths, and twelve sixteenths. All right. So now what we're going to be doing is working on our practice paper. Mine looks a little bit different. It's on your paper, so make sure that you have your practice paper out. I'm going to do a couple problems with you, and the rest you're going to do by yourself. So looking at number one, first things first, I want you to look at that table. You've got types of music, rock, pop, country, and then the number of songs on that playlist. So you've got a playlist of rock, and it's got 10 songs, pop, 15 songs, and country, only five. What I tell my kids is always find the total. I want you to find out how many are actually here and how many total songs are there. There's 30, 30 total. That's always a good thing to find. Find the total. Now let's go ahead and read the question. So it says, write the ratio of pop songs. Look how they're bolding it for you. They want you to write that number on top. Pop songs to rock songs in three ways. So you're going to write it all three ways. Now, first way, words. 15, it says, colon, 15, colon, 10, and fraction, 15 over 10. Now, something might have caught your eye. You're like, I know these numbers and I know I can break them down. I want you to break them down. I think that's great. You want to simplify them. I'm not asking you to give me a mixed number. I don't want a mixed number. I want you to simplify it exactly the way it is. So what could I divide the top and the bottom by? Exactly. You could divide both of these by five. And if you divide these by five, oh, that's not a five. That's a weird looking number. If you simplify this by five, you will be left with three over two. That's as low as it can go. And that's actually the correct way that you want to write this answer. Three to two, three colon two, and three over two. You gotta challenge yourself to think about it. Can I break these numbers down? Can I simplify these numbers? Let's look at number two. Let's look at number two. Which of the following best describes the relationship between the number of rock songs and the total number of songs? So good thing we found the total. We know it is 30. Now I'm going to show you a trick because I bet you're looking at this going, that's a lot of words, Miss Meyer. Come on now. And I'm going to show you a cool trick. You're going to do exactly what I just told you to do. Wherever you see the words, put the number. So let's try A. The number of total, total is 30. 
Look at that. I'm like skip reading. Rock songs. Rock songs. 10. And I'm going to write my fraction like my told me. 30 over 10. Simplify it. I know you know if you cancel out those zeros, it'll be 3 over 1, which is really just 3. Now check this out. Go and read it. What does this say right here? Does it say three times? No, it said one third. That's wrong. Out of here. That wasn't hard. Let's do the next one. Let's do B. Rock songs. 10. Uh, da, 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 total, 30. All right, let me make my fraction. 10 over 30, scratch out the zeros, one third. Does it say one third right here? Yes, it does. That's a maybe. Let's keep going. The number of total, 30, like blah, 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 10. Okay, this one's 30 over 10, scratch it out. Oh, this is just three. Does it say three times? No, wrong. And the last one, rock songs, 10 total, 30. 10 over 30 will give you one third. Does it say one third? No. So our answer was very easy to find. It was B. You see how much easier that is than actually having to sit there and read and see, huh, does this make sense? You can do it by actually putting in those fractions. Remember, re-watch the video if you need to, rewind if you need to. I'm going too fast, just watch it again. Listen the first time and then you can copy down the notes. All right, question number three. All right, question number three says, which of the following has the same ratio? As soon as I see that, I go, ah, equivalent fraction, equivalent fraction. Same ratio of country, country has five to rock songs. Rock is 10. Okay, as Williams playlist. Are you ready for another trick? All right. Are you ready? Check this out. Country has less than rock, correct? If I'm skip counting, will country ever have more than rock? No, it's five to 10. It's always gonna go up. You know that this always has to be smaller than this. So watch this. Country, is 10 less than 15? Yes. Is four less than eight? Yes. Is 12 less than six? No. Is 10 less than five? No. So I've narrowed it down already. I'm done. I've got it down. Now, let's look at these fractions. I've got 10 over 15, and I've got four over eight. Now, some of y'all probably looked at five over 10, and you were like, oh, that's half, Miss Meyer. Absolutely, it's half. Five is half of 10. Is 10 half of 15? No. Is four half of eight? Yes. So your answer is B. B, very good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. So now what I want you to do is pause the video and I want you to try four through six by yourself. And then I want you to come and check with me. Then the back will be due for homework. So go ahead and pause the video and I'll wait. Okay, so hopefully you did this by yourself. If you didn't, please don't cheat yourself. I actually want you to practice just like if you were in my class. So here it says, write the ratio of suns. Oh, suns is two to lightning bolts, four in three ways. All right, so I bet you did this, two, four, two, colon, four, or two, oh, two, over four. How many of y'all got to right here and you were like, oh, I can simplify that? Yes, the correct way you should have written all of these is, you know, two is half of four, so it should have been one half, one to two, one to two. Either way would have been fine, but I really need you to write it like this. This is the correct way. Okay, so now let's do this one. The number of lightning bolts, lightning bolts was four to the number of sun, two. And if I put this over here, it's four over two, and we know that simplified down to 
2 over 1, which was twice. Twice or two times. Now below, the number of suns is blank the number of lightning bolts. So it's 2 over 4, which we know is 1 half. That's exactly what you write down, half. The number of suns is half the number of lightning bolts. And the last thing you're going to do is circle the ratios below that are equivalent to the ratio of suns to lightning. Suns, two, lightning, four. We just solved it over there. It was one half. So let's see who's correct. Is this one to two? No. Is six? Half of 12? Yes. Is 2 half of 6? No. Is 9 half of 18? Yes. Is 5 half of 7? Absolutely not. And is 1 half of 2 or 1 to 2 like we just wrote? Yes. Okay. So now it's your, uh, now it's up to you to complete the rest of that worksheet. Good luck.